and welcome to the Alex Rabina Radio Show. I'm your host in the KH studio in downtown Newhall, California with my lovely co-host Ellen Tunick. This show is all about life coaching and how to create a maximum value for yourself from a life coach or from the simple willingness to be open to all possibilities. Uh, this is a series called Helping You Reach Your Full Potential, and we're going to do a live coaching session. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a peek into an open, honest dialogue where we open up possibilities for people to create interpersonal breakthroughs. And today uh, we have one of my good friends joining me in studio. She is an entrepreneur, a philanth philanthropist. philanthropist. She's also an amazing mother, daughter, and a leader in our friend. And a, I said that, my oh, good friend. You? I said my oh. good friend. So I had a little more than just friend. But she's also a leader in our community. <laughs> leader in our community, Mrs. Jerry Sarati Goldman. Thanks for being here. Hi, guys. If we Hi, had guys. the applause, we would probably add that. Ooh, but no, you're embarrassing. Yeah, you're exactly. You yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so before we get into a coaching session, let me first talk about how to be coachable. There's three powerful distinctions I want you to be open to. The first one is you got to be open-minded. Um, you ha you can't you have to have a mindset of at least being open to that something is possible, rather than falling back on I've never seen it before, so therefore you got to prove it to me. You just got to be open to the possibility that it can happen, it is possible, um, even if you haven't seen it yet. And so if you're if you're open minded, you now have an opening to possibly see something that you couldn't see before. So that's one is be open minded. The other thing is you got to be really self aware. You got to be willing to look at yourself and reflect upon yourself. Like, ask yourself questions like, why did I say that? Why did I do that? Uh, why did I choose that? Where was I choosing from? So you just got to learn how to live in the question, be constantly in the question and checking in with self instead of looking outward. Like, why did you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because that's powerless when, it, when you're making it about other people. It's powerful when you can look from the part you play because then you can actually change it. But when you're looking outward, you're, you're not really in your own power. And then the third thing is be willing to surrender some old limiting beliefs, some old conditioning maybe that you grew up with from the neighborhood or the family or the culture. You know, we're, we've been told when we were little certain things and we just hold on to them as though they're the truth. And they might not necessarily be the truth or real. They could just be a belief that we hold on to, and therefore it becomes the truth. But th those beliefs end up getting in the way of us reaching our full potential. And so with that being said, welcome to the show, Jerry. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always an honor to have you on the show. So what's the first uh, topic that you would like to get into? And, and before you do that, you've been a big supporter of me, and uh, you've also been a very uh, good coachy and student. And uh, you kind of set the mold for leaders who have decided that you're going to be a lifelong learner instead of a know-it-all. And uh, you're out there kind of leading the pack, always wanting more feedback, always wanting to jump into the gap and continue to work on yourself, look at some of the areas of improvement. And I think that that sets a, a great example, especially for the younger people that are watching you, because there's a lot of eyes on you watching you and seeing how you develop and uh, being a lifelong learner and letting other people know that, hey, even even champions get coached. You know, even warriors need to look at some of the parts where they're not performing at full potential. And so I want to applaud you for that. And, and thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Yeah. And that's actually because you're coaching. So back at you, my buddy, because... I'm in this time and space because of the coaching I have from you and have had for years that makes uh, my life joyful. Thank you for that. Ooh, Appreciate it. Great word. <laughs> so what do you want to start with today? What's the topic or what's the question you have to kind of dive into that area? Um, I, I'm going to start with home life. So I have my 83-year-old dad living with us and his companion. And recently, my youngest son just moved in, and I feel the, the term the sandwich generation, where you've got the younger and the older in the house, I'm coming home at night and getting it from both ends. Both ends. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spend a little time with my dad, um, and then I go up to my room and I hide recently because I feel very, very sandwiched. Is that because you feel like you have to please both your father and your son? Um, Are you being tugged in different directions to 
please them? Or What I've noticed is, you know, I'll get the feedback from my dad's companion of everything that went wrong. And then a couple of weeks ago, you, you know, coached me on that. So I'm now saying to the companion, hey, this is not my monkey. If there's a problem, please go to my son and explain it to him. I'm not going to um, fight, tell that story. Excuse me. Um, so... And then from the other side, I'm not getting from my son everything that my dad does, but just having him back in the house and, you know, walking into a mess in my kitchen. So I'm very, there's oh, certain things I'm very OCD I would, about. I would have to just, someone would have to put a straight jacket on me. <laughs> and yeah, so, you know, every day it gets a little bit better, but then I'll come in and there's a big piece of equipment in the middle of my kitchen and I've made it, you know... I thought I'd made it very clear of this is my space. I've been at work all day, and I, I need that sanctuary when I get home. So kitchen. Off limits. Yeah, just everything. That's the center of our house. And it's it's a hit and miss. We've been a little bit better the last two days. Um, but also having a ki- we were kidless, which it's so ironic because for so many years it was like, oh, my gosh, no kids. Getting used to that and really loving that. <laughs> Understood. Um, and then having them back in the house, then feeling the sandwich. So that's, you know, and you and I have had many, many discussions about it. And right now it seems to work for me to come home, do my little visiting. My dad won't knock on my door. My son will. So at least he comes in and asks his questions. And I'm okay with that, um, I think. I don't want to shut my dad out. And, you know, he's older. So... What else could I be doing to come in and, you know, I, you've always had me, it's a matter of, what's the term you've used several times, uh, it's change your mindset, you know, to walk into something and be prepared for it, which I have, but in preparation, I'm, I get tired. So I just want to kind of be left alone. All right. So what's the question? Perform it into a question so I could speak to it. <sighs> just want to make sure that I'm not dissing my dad or my son in wanting my quiet time. So in other words, is it okay to go to your room and have your yes. quiet time? Yes. Is, is, that's... I even want my quiet time from my husband because we work together. So, that's are, understood. All right. So you're, so Ellen, thanks for stepping in and giving her a question because <laughs> this is what the ego does. Our ego gets in the way and doesn't want us to ask a question. So we really have to some, sometimes fight through all of the fear and the insecurities and just some of the ego that pretends to know it all and just recognize that maybe if I ask the question and then somebody speaks to it, I might have a new level of clarity. So the, so the answer to the question, and I'm going to just use it as a starting point, is – Yes, you definitely deserve to have that time and that space to help yourself um, clear off of the day that you've already started since you walked out of the house. So for me, a lot of times what I do is I have that moment before I actually walk into the home. And it's actually a tradition or a ritual that I do. And my kids have seen it since they were five or six years old. And it's when they walk up the, the, the house, they see dad still in the car. And what I do is I give myself five or ten minutes to just get centered and grounded so that when I walk in, I'm walking in with the intention to be a loving, caring, patient, compassionate father and husband. If I don't do that, what I do is I walk in with all of my baggage from the the day earlier on. And then unconsciously, I could be projecting that onto them. So what I have to do is I have to find these little moments that I transition from, whether it's from one coaching session to the next or one business meeting to the next, I'm, I'm constantly spending just a few minutes to get centered and grounded in my vehicle. You can do it right outside the porch. You can do it wherever you want, but you have to figure out how to get into that quiet space and shift your intention before you actually engage with others. Because if you don't do that in a mindful, conscious, intentional way, you just bring everything, right, all of your – uh, worries, all your concerns, right all the, the stuff that's that's got the wheel spinning and you're bringing it right into your home. And all it takes is for somebody in your home to say something that they just get the, 
right? They just well, get dumped because on. then you come in and it's an obligation to spend that time. Boom. And then you go to your room. And if I'm hearing you correctly, we don't want it to be obligatory. We want to be present. Yeah, you don't want it to be a have to. Like, I have to now hear my dad and I have to hear my son here's complain. Here's five minutes. Here's yeah. your ten. It, but if I get centered and grounded, I can shift to I get to be mom. I get to be daughter. I get to be the leader of my home that that obviously they haven't developed uh, certain abilities to be able to master their relationships. But you have. So sometimes you just got to get centered and grounded and remind yourself that you're one of the leaders in that home. And the reason why they come to you is because they haven't learned how to get along with each other. They haven't learned how to accept each other's differences. They, they, they don't have a bigger capacity of tolerance for each other. Um, so they get triggered and they get, you know, all this dysfunction is happening. And you're the go-to. Right. And sometimes we just go, man, sometimes I don't want to be I the go-to. I was just <laughs> going to say that. Like, can you please figure this out yeah, yourself? Yeah. Well, and especially having the peace for so long and now having to shift back. So what I'm hearing you say then is what you've the same thing that I'm doing in the morning where I wake up even if I haven't had a good night's sleep, I'm still getting centered and grounded and doing my my energy work and my prayers to start my day. That's right. And it doesn't matter if I've had no sleep or eight hours of sleep, I'm still getting in the shower and going, I'm gonna have a great day. I'm gonna create incredible magic in our world for this day. So. Yeah, and when you walk out, you I'm I'm assuming you walk out already ready to take on the oh, day. Every day. I have you seen you here in the mornings when you walk in, you walk in with a certain light, a certain optimism about you. Now I'm just inviting you to create a mini version of that before you head home. You can even do one in your office before you leave. And then and then a smaller regrounding right in your driveway before you walk in, whether it's the prayer or the gratitude, just to say, "Hey, I need to take a deep breath right now." I need to get centered and grounded so that I have what it takes, the capacity to be able to step into my home. And then right as soon as I walk in the door, it's blah, 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 blah. Can you imagine? Can you believe that? And, and you're just starting to get bombarded. You're just you've already prepared yourself for it. And a lot of times we don't we don't live our life like that. But but that, you know, can we not ask the participants in our home and our family to respect and say, I'm going to be there for you. Please give me 10 minutes so that I can change my clothing, that I can go upstairs and just take a deep breath, and then I will be available for you. Is that a question? That's a question. Yes, you can ask them that. However, However. <laughs> you're, because you can't control other people, that doesn't mean that that's going to land, that it's going to be well-received, it's going to be honored, and that they're actually going to give you that space. you got to remember, most people are unconscious and – when you have requests, it goes in one ear and out the yeah. other ear, and tomorrow they're Seems right. Seems so simple to me. Oh, yeah, it <laughs> makes sense to you. Because, totally. But only because you're more aware, and you are more aware. You've developed certain inner qualities about you like honor or you respect people's time. There are certain things that you've developed at a higher levels, but there's other people in our lives that haven't developed that, and so they're just on automatic pilot. They're reactive. So you don't know that dad's been sitting there for four hours waiting. Just He can't wait to go tattletale on his grandson. So when he comes in, he's ready to jump on you to go, guess what? It's like like little kids. You have guess what my children, brother did. Really. Guess what my sister did. They're ready to tattletale because they've yeah. never evolved or developed past yeah. that, that stage. And for, <clears throat> excuse me, for Carl and I, Carl comes in and he usually hasn't eaten all day. So his first thing is to get his clothes off and eat. And eat. And yeah, get in, comf get in comfortable clothing, and then now I need to – my body's starving for nutrition. I need to do that. And anything that disrupts that, I'm like, right? Well, and, that, and that's <laughs> taking years to get used to because my thing is I want my detox time. So I'd rather get off of what we need to discuss from the day and then go eat or, you know, there was times that we would walk, but he's not the same way. So it's taken a couple years just to get used to, the, you know, I have to eat. And I would want him to eat anyway because he's such a crab apple. If not, but it's interesting the dynamics where I'd rather get it, spend the time, ten minutes, fifteen minutes. Be done with it. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, yeah. E bye even bye. if you did just a, a prep one, just a, a short version of, all right, I'm gonna get centered and grounded just to be able to handle anything that's thrown at me between me walking in the door <laughs> and getting to my room. And so, so just helping yourself get centered and grounded, like. 
um, I get to be the space of non-reactiveness and allow myself to handle anything that comes at me without being reactive until I get to my room. And then maybe when you get to your room, you're able to now take 10 minutes or you maybe turn and you tell your dad, give me five or 10 minutes. I'll be right back down. And I promise that we'll have this discussion and we'll clean it up. So I need a piece of paper and pen. Shane. Well, and you, and you can, you can just go back in and, you know, listen know. to the I know, podcast for those so of you that are just joining us. Something just resonated. Okay. Got it. All right. We like that. Well, yeah. Cause uh -huh. You know, one of the things about having aha moments is if you hear it, you have like a mini breakthrough. And then if you write it, you actually have a second level breakthrough. But then if you're able to actually share it or, sh or say it out loud and then you hear yourself say it, you really ingrain that aha moment. It's like to a studying. Level. It totally is studying. I used to study that way. Yeah. I would read it. Yeah. I would say it out loud. Then I would write it. It's gets put through the brain That's multiple right. times. That's right. What I used to do levels. is I would hear something, I would write it down, I'd come home, and then I would reread it again, and then I would tell my kids, come here, let me teach you something. And then they would roll their eyes and right. go, what now, Dad? And then I'll go, I just learned this today. And as I'm sharing with them, I'm actually learning, I'm learning, learning it to the it next level. Yeah. yeah. Well, and for years I've taken out notes, which I have my Alex notes, probably about this deep of stuff that I'll go through and – and when I read them out loud and then I'll make new notes from it, I'm learning even more. So what did you write down? Or the classic response that I normally say is, what did you hear me say? And I lost that thought, so I didn't write anything okay. down. <laughs> <laughs> because you weren't prepared with no, the No, I didn't bring in. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, there was something you said that was, oh, my gosh, that's it. You know, there's something that pops up in, in my head is that we as women – always seem to be the ones, the, the go-to people. Um, and over the years, that's been wonderful for me because it's given me purpose, it's given me validation. But how do you transition from always being that go-to person to not having to be that go-to person? Because sometimes it gets old. That's a great question. And I think in our house, because of Alex's coaching for years, it's not just on me. So I think we've made that transformation where, and even with duties in the house, Carl and I, you know, he's got his stuff, I've got my stuff, but I don't feel like I'm the point person. Okay. It's, it's more shared. So I'm going to give you a couple of bullet points to respond to that question for you, a little golden nugget to take away. One is uh, you have to slowly wean people off of your enabling. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> because I you got to be open to the possibility that out of my love for you, when every time you come to me, I come in because I love you so much, I want to help you, that I come in and I just handle things for you. Correct. Rather than saying, hey, what would be a good way, and then have a discussion about, trying to figure out how to empower them to handle it for themselves. So once you start to uh, decide that I'm no longer going to keep doing things for you, but I'm going to be a part of the process of helping you figure out how to do it for yourself, then they will start practicing how to think for themselves, choose for themselves, uh, act for themselves, and then create those new results that you've been just stepping in handling for them. I have to be very self-aware. Absolutely. In order to change that process. Right. And so because I said that to you, now you have a n higher awareness of the possibility that you could be unconsciously enabling the people you love the most. It's not even unconscious at this point. Well, now you're just hyper aware of it. Yeah. So now you're now it's consciously you're going, man, I've been enabling people for some yeah. years. And it only it only becomes because we love people. It's, we love people. We we don't want them to suffer. It's all from the heart. Right. We don't want you to suffer. However, However <laughs> we don't realize that in suffering, there's uh, opportunities for us to learn grit and perseverance. And it's an opportunity for opportunity for me to figure out how to think outside the box and reinvent myself and discover that I have all my own answers and yes I can do it if I don't have someone to jump in and save me all the time doesn't mean that you can't pick and choose which ones you're gonna help right but you gotta learn how to go no this one you get to figure this one out on your own and yeah they're gonna be mad at you for a little while because you've because it's different yeah it's different you you've trained them to come to you and you've been handling 
nine out of ten of the requests, now you've decided I'm only going to handle four out of the ten requests. And the rest choice. of them, you're going to have to figure that out. Um, these are great questions. Uh, we're going to continue the coaching. We'll come back from the break. You're listening to the Alex Rubina Radio Show right here in your hometown station, KHTS. Santa Clarita, bed bugs are taking over our city. They've invaded our homes, our businesses, and most importantly, our sleep. If you have suspicious bites that appear nightly or have a bug that you need ID, your best option is to make one call to All Pro. We offer a 100% guarantee that your bed bug issues will be solved with heat in one treatment. No need to tent or spray your house with chemicals. Heat is all you need. Call 661 298 2200 or text me a bug picture to 661 645 0540. It's time to sleep tight again, SCV. There are times when nothing else will do because you know exactly what you want. You want the Alamo, the taste of true Mexican cooking at its best. At Alamo, you're treated to a taste that is truly Mexican with an atmosphere to match. Enjoy a Cadillac margarita, try a mucho burrito or sizzling fajitas. Voted the best Mexican food in the SCV and a favorite of former supervisor Mike Antonovich. Alamo Rotisserie in Granary Square, serving Santa Clarita for over 30 years. AV Equipment Rentals is your local rental store, no matter how big or small your home project is, AV Equipment Rental has the tool you need to do the job right. From painting to plumbing, landscaping to automotive, their knowledgeable staff will make sure you get the right tool for the right price. In fact, they'll even help you load it in your car. I bet you didn't know they have propane to fill up your barbecue tank with no minimum quantity. With a large supply of tools and a helpful and professional staff, the hometown service attitude, AV Equipment Rental is your local Santa Clarita Rental Authority. Stop by AV Equipment Rentals today on Railroad Avenue in New Hall. Your hometown station. KHTS AM 1220 and the new 98.1 FM. And welcome back to the Alex Rubino Radio Show. I'm your host, Alex Rubino. I'm an advanced life coach specialist. And I'm in studio with my beautiful, loving, compassionate co-host, Ellen Tunick. That she is. And Jerry Cerati goldman who's in the hot seat today, giving herself permission to be open, to be coached, to continue to learn, discover, and grow, and just be a lifelong learner of figuring out how to get inside the gap so we can keep learning how to develop more emotional intelligence, how to master ourselves so that we can live our life you know, freed up from being tagged, being um, rigid, being angry, being disappointed. Imagine living your life where nothing ever really just gets your go. Like you're able to just Can't imagine. be okay with <laughs> I know, the, a lot of people the like dysfunctional that. people that are around us. We learn how to be compassionate for them. You know, people say, um, have off the wall remarks or they just, you know, say things. Little zingers. Yeah. And then, and it's okay. Imagine just being so powerful and freed up that we can don't have to give up our power to any of those people. So before we went on a break, we were having a discussion uh, regarding a question that you asked that was, I think, was powerful. Um, what was the takeaway? What was the aha moment? What, what did you hear me say regarding the, the response to that question? The aha moment for me was that all my life I've never – I've always wanted to uh, fix and not have people I love suffer. But then – what I'm hearing is suffering is not a negative. Suffering is not a bad word. That's my aha. By opening somebody up to suffering, but to move through that and learn something and grow from it, then I've actually created opportunity, not suffering. And so imagine all the times that you suffered in your life and you – had a a belief about the suffering like i can't believe that i had to go through that and you made suffering a bad negative Correct. thing yes but now and when you become more wise and you realize you know what suffering actually were opportunities for me to figure out who i am and what i'm capable of and they gave me opportunities for me to uh figure out how to reinvent myself and it gave me opportunities to realize that i can do things so then now, in hindsight, you can look back and you can choose to see suffering as a blessing. Yes. Now now you don't have to be the victim and be down and out because you think your life was so horrible because of all the suffering that you apparently <laughs> had, right? Yeah. It's all a matter of changing the narrative. 
Yes. And if you can see suffering as it and taught you who you who to become the person that you are today. It's a, it's a huge opportunity. So then you get to now go. Then I don't get to go in and en- and enable the loved ones in my life from that suffering because that's going to help build their character and it's going to help build the leadership and the self-directed leader that that they are in their own life and then they stop coming to you for for um answers uh they stop coming to you to fix them or solve their problems now then you would have to be willing to give up the neediness of of being there for everyone as well. So you got to be open to that possibility. To move that away from feeling validated. By yes, that. exactly. Because there's now the opens the possibility that maybe I I need to be needed by people. I can I can and, validate differently. Yes, and that and that now I can look and go instead of needing to be needed. I'm so grateful that I taught somebody and I empowered someone to be the leader that they are. Now, what if we all operated like that? What if we built people up around us to be uh, a, t- uh, a leader of leaders or a leader developing leaders instead of all these leaders that are so hungry to have followers because there's a, there's a, there's leaders that just get off on having millions of followers. And then there's leaders of leaders. They go, no, I want to develop more leaders, not develop more followers. Then we would all be empowered to live our life in a powerful way. Nice. Yes. So with that being said, um, you got all the answers figured out no, for your life? No, <laughs> but every day I learn. So over uh, last weekend, our um, oldest just moved to a different state. He's got a brand new baby. Yes. Just started his master's program. They're in a condo, I guess, that they, the uh, my daughter-in-law thinks that there's mold in. They, one, the baby's uh, colicky. The four-year-old's getting adjusted, and they're just in a storm, a crap storm. Um, and when I realized that when we were FaceTiming that it didn't matter what I said or what suggestion, so I just backed off. Just backed off because there, w- there was no coaching. But what's been interesting is he's reached out to my husband several times this week, very early in the morning, and he just needed to vent. So there's a time to, and as a mom, because I wanted to jump in and, you know, even and, as yeah, a, Be as on the a, airplane. <laughs> <laughs> Even as a mother-in-law to a daughter-in-law, you got there's a fine line where you can only oh, through the years I've had to really navigate that and know what I can and can't say and what my place is. So I realized that whatever suggestion wasn't resonating with either one of them, him as much as her, she was more open than he was, which was interesting. But it was a really good for me another aha. Can't fix it. Um, can't control it, did what I could and being able to back off that, you know, you know, it's been popping up in my, you know, 2 a.m. potty trips at night, you know, with worry. But then I have to say, this is his life. This is part of his growth. And he, this is part of what's going to take him and them to the next level. Yeah. What did you see or what did you hear coming from your son? That was um, for new the for you. well for the first time he was there so sleep deprived having a new baby, and he's not getting homework done that there was a whole new kid that showed up, that was like, wow. So, you know, I I I attempted to coach back and saw that there wasn't they weren't coachable at the time, so I wasn't going to waste my words, and know that I had to back off. And for me as a controller, backing off and not controlling, especially when you want to help your kids, is very tough. But it it was what I had to do. So even though I've you know had the sleepless nights this week, it it just is what it is. I don't know what the question was. Yeah, because she's not really asking a question. So what? So in that whole uh, scenario, if you, what would be the part of you that if you can have it be the next level, a breakthrough, what question could you ask to get that clarity to be able to be more effective with helping your son? And your Did I handle it right? Well, okay, so even your question, there is no right or wrong when you're trying to support people. Okay. So let's not go to did I do something right or did I do something wrong or is this good or is this bad because that's a judgment. However, 
um, I'm going to just speak into it and just assume that the question is, is how could I be more effective with helping them? Correct. Is that a good question yeah, for you? All right. Good. So then I, I think that by looking at maybe how you speak to them is important. Sometimes as parents, when we're giving advice, we don't use neutral words that don't press their buttons. So here's an example. If you remember your mom and dad giving you advice and it has a certain tone behind it or the certain <laughs> words. I still get advice. Uh, yeah. Or the words that you use, like you can see them getting riled up. And in your mind, you're thinking, kid, I'm giving you advice. Why are you getting angry right now? It's because some of the words that we're using, we don't hear ourselves say them. But if we recorded ourselves and then went back and listened to it, we would go, oh, that word. I, that word. I need to learn how to replace that word. I need to learn how to replace this word. And a lot of times, like, parents will have me sit with their kids, and then they'll say their concern, and then I'll say, Mom, is it okay if I rephrase that to your kid? And then I'll rephrase it, and the kid's face will light up, and then we'll start this dialogue. And it's just sometimes just in the wording that doesn't trigger your kid to just have their walls come up or they go parent deaf on us. It just takes one word, one one mistone that they just they get defensive. And it's like, I'm trying to help you here. And then we're wondering why we're trying to help you and you don't want to take it. I always feel when I'm cognizant of that, I always feel like I'm stepping on, I have to step on eggshells. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, maybe it's just the beginning of the process for me, but I feel constantly, should I say that? Should I not say that? You know, is that going to be offensive? If that is that not going to, I mean, in my head, it's like I'm walking on eggshells. So there's a couple ways for you to learn how to give advice without feeling like you're walking on eggshells. Because if you feel like you're walking on eggshells, you already know that some of the words that you're using and the and you already know that the minute I open my my mouth, there's a high percentage that I'm going to offend them or I'm going to say something that they don't like. And it's a possibility of or now getting a yeah, confrontation. Yeah, it's just going to come off as um, a, maybe a judgment or it's going to come off as I'm telling them right. what to do. Um, so I'm so aware of that that sometimes it's hard to even have a conversation. Yeah, so I'm going yes. to give you a model as a starting point, right, as some, as some framework. And then on top of the framework, you can figure out how to readjust that in your own style like add your own Ellenism to it so that it sounds like it's genuinely from you, but it's more neutral. And the framework, and I wrote this in my book, it's called uh, Feel Felt Found. And the way that it works is I know how you feel. I, too, have felt like that before in my 20s and my 30s or last week. What I found out was through that experience And then from that moment, you can actually share from your experience what you learned. And they're sitting there with big eyeballs absorbing all of the advice you're giving from that context. What most of us do is we start off with, well, if you would have done this. Yeah, if you would have done like this, that implies that. They're bad and wrong because they didn't do it the way that you had suggested before. We don't realize that the words we're using already were chopping our toes off. If it was a video game and our parent trust level was at 100% and we used two or three words starting off, that level would go right to drop down to 40 and then 20. And then it'd be at 10 by the end of the conversation. And then we're wondering why our son or daughters are are mad at us and it's like what did i say i was just trying to help you right (laughs) what did i say i was just trying to help yeah yeah and so sometimes just what did i do just by being aware of the words you're using and you start using more neutral words not implying and again implying isn't really necessarily uh, uh, something on your part implying could just be perceived on their part it's an interpretation from their own self limiting doubts and fears and insecurities like you might say something to me and I interpret it like, what, do you think I'm not smart enough to, ha-? you know what I mean? It's like I can be offended totally by what you're sharing and the insight you're trying to give me. So I think sometimes just being aware of the words we're using and how we're saying them, we can really either cause somebody to be inspired and empowered and, and excited 
or we can totally turn someone off because one or two words we heard offended them. Now, I know that I, well, I'm, I, I think I did a really good job in watching my words because I've got some mantras that my mom would use that would trigger me. If I were you, it was a good one. There you go. Um, I don't use that. <laughs> uh, there was, she's got some other ones, um, as does my husband, that kind of still trigger me mm-hmm. to this day. We all got triggers from people. Yeah. They, or it let just, me tell you. There you go. Let me tell you is a, is a tough one for me. Yeah. So, or a have to. Yeah. So in If you would have. Yeah. So I was very conscious of how I was saying it and suggesting, you know, when Ryan would get colicky, I really, you know, tra- tracked it down to things I ate the night before. Um have you tried putting him on the dryer? You know, things that, it, so just making suggestions, but it's still, even with all the words that I were, I was very, very conscious of as I was speaking, I still got. Do your feelings get hurt when you no, get pushed not back? No. Not, no. not anymore. Not, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> did, did they, oh. okay. So, so now, in your sharing, right, as, as you're sharing from the way you used to speak to her or them to now how you speak, all I'm saying is that are you open to now you got you went from a two to a six. Absolutely. And all I'm saying is now there's a seven, eight, and a nine. Yeah. So seven, eight, and nine can now sound like, hey, have you ever considered this? I was reading this in a in a magazine. Go look for it. It's on time. Type in blah blah blah. And you're not actually giving them the advice, but you're kind of you're just sharing third party of what you heard. Like there's some people that I have to literally like I have to disguise the advice like I heard it from someone else to give it to them. And then two weeks later, they're actually doing it. And they're like, oh, yeah, this is what I found out. And I realized that. And I'm just going awesome. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. And I actually did that. You have to trick people sometimes to help them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I did that. And it actually worked because my daughter-in-law is looking into it. Yeah. So you got to get creative with your advice. You got to get if you want to help people. You got to figure out who do I need to be that I may that I don't show up like the wolf. How do I show up as though my heart's on my sleeve? Um, I have no intentions other than to just support you 150 percent, and that everything that comes out of my mouth is because I love and care about you, and I'm on your team. I'm on your team yeah. to have you win, and so you got to. And it's and it's and it's just a whole nother level of supporting people. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, the process. at the end of the day, whether you're able to figure out how to support them or not, you just got to learn how to surrender it, let it go, because it's part of their journey. It's part of their process. If they're not ready to hear it the way that you've delivered it, it's just a live and learn type, type of thing. And then they get to figure it out the hard way, which is, I think, probably the best way for most of us to learn anyways. Right. And that, that word surrender, because sometimes when I feel the pushback, um, or I just feel it wasn't received the way I wanted it to be received. In my head, I go, oh, fine. You know, I'm just, I'm over it, I, blah, blah, blah. But what I need to do is say, okay, this person is just not processing it with the intent I had, and I will surrender that to them and uh, let them figure it out. Instead of going to that negative, fine, I just, you know, I'm, I'm over it. Sometimes, yes, I love that. E- I don't surrender. I get like, yeah, fine. But you, but you get pissy about it. Inside, yeah, I get yeah. pissy about it. But I, instead of getting pissy about it, I need to just be in that moment and surrender it to them. Absolutely. And by you surrendering it, it lets you go. It unhooks you from taking on the burden of I got to help everyone and I'm responsible for everyone's life and all that kind of stuff. Part of that process that we're talking about for me, you know, moving away from that, being able to really understand what surrendering is. I had boot camp with surrender. So when our son went, oh, do you believe? And yes, I do believe in God. And then if you did, you would surrender. And that took weeks to wrap it in my brain. And once I did wrap it, I was able to surrender three deployments later without being nuts and not having my sleep affected. Or causing ulcers yes. or your own cancer because you internalize. Yeah, because so you much. don't because you haven't practiced the art of surrendering the fears. 
You haven't practiced the art of surrender, surrendering that you have no control over it. So once you practice the art of surrendering the fear and, the con and not being in control, then it now sets you up to embrace the faith. Faith is nothing but a higher level of trust. I trust that everything is going to be okay. I trust that it's his journey and that he's safe until I hear otherwise. Right. And start living in the present moment instead of, oh, my God, what if? Because when we're afraid, we always hold on to, yeah, but what if? We're practicing that now <laughs> with my grandson's yeah. first deployment, and he's in right. Afghanistan. Yeah. And the other thing was I had a shutdown on, I had joined uh, on some of his deployments, some social media groups where you would, you know, we, you know, you'd, we heard that there was three fatalities or things like that that would make me nuts. So shutting down social media was very, very important too. Yeah, you got to limit the what's trigger, the trigger objects yeah. for what's going to keep. Is it not watching some of the movies, some of the military movies? Is it you know taking myself off of that so that I can stay focused on what I believe is possible and what's in my heart, rather than triggering that fear where my ego gets on it like a hamster in a hamster wheel. And before you know it, I'm, you know, sick right and, now. and I can't think clearly. And it, my whole life is ruined because I'm living in the psychological resistance to something that if I just learn how to surrender all the fear the and the control, freeing, it, freeing, it's freeing free, of yourself. Freeing of, of, and I yeah. do not watch any army movies. <laughs> I do not. I mean that. I get yeah. it. I mean, there's certain things because what happens is, my sleep is very important to me. I'm an eight or nine hour person a night, and when I don't have that, I don't function the same way. And watching a movie could keep me up at night or whatever. Absolutely. So I just and you, don't do it. And you're responsible for your own well-being, so you got to know what yeah. to cut off and what. You what can to allow have, in and yeah, what yeah. to yeah, because you remember, stop at the door. Everything that you hear and everything you see is is now somehow influencing how you think, how you feel. So you got to be the one that's deciding. We do it all day long. A lot of us, we're like, okay, I'm not watching these programs or I'm not watching TV, period, or I'm not going to go on social media. You have to learn how to frame yourself based on what you can handle. And I think it's your responsibility to decide what you can and what you can't handle. So you can be True. effective in your life. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we get back, Ellen and I are going to wrap up the show. So stay tuned for more of the Alex Rubina Radio Show right here in your hometown station, KHTS. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town New Hall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. La Esmeralda is home to truly authentic Mexican food. This family-owned restaurant prides itself on its fresh-to-order menu. Even the tortillas are made in-house. If you have a taste for sizzling fajitas, flautas, or menudo, you have to try La Esmeralda's Mexican and Seafood Restaurant. Dine in or order out for the most authentic Mexican food Santa Clarita has to offer. Their Taco Tuesdays, it'll turn you into a regular. La Esmeralda on Bouquet at Haskell. Are you ready for some football? Consumers Furniture is. Come on in and check out our huge selection of Power Motion furniture. We have the largest selection of reclining sectionals, sofas, love seats, and recliners in the Santa Clarita Valley. Fabric or leather, Consumers has the right piece at the right price to make your home ready for all the big games. Need it for this Saturday or Sunday? No problem. Consumers has same day or next day delivery on most of our items. Consumers Furniture is located in the Center Point Shopping Center right below Sam's Club in Walmart. KHTS. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. Welcome back to the Alex Rubino Radio Show. I'm your host, hanging out with Ellen Tunick, my co-host, and Jerry Serrati-Goldman. I have a question for you, too. 
So the question is, what are you learning today to remind you of how to master your life? And some of it is either new aha moments or sometimes it's, man, I needed to hear this for the 250th time because it just helped me get <laughs> more clarity. Because this is literally, I think peop, most people think like once I've learned something, I've mastered it. And it's like, no, it's only a concept that you have to constantly be reminding yourself of these things on a constant basis. And it's so easy to ignore them. Absolutely. You know why? Why? Because ego doesn't want you to remember it. So it's going to keep having you somehow pretend you don't know or forget. Or that I'll deal with you, that later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's not that important right now. That's right. So what's the takeaway? What did you learn? What did you remind yourself of, of what you need to keep practicing to master your life? Um, what My aha moments and, and my takeaways uh, were definitely – changing, reframing uh, my idea of helping, uh, reframing the idea that I can give my, my family, my friends, whatever, opportunity by doing nothing, uh, by just being there and loving them, but by allowing them to ma manage themselves mm -hmm. and their process. Mm -hmm. uh, and also the word surrender. I really need to wrap my head around what what does that really mean and how does it impact me and when do I use it um, that's a, a concept that I'd really like to work on a well, lot. Well now that you're aware of it you're going to start noticing it come up more in your life. And I can choose it. Yeah it's going to you're going to start to have moments where you go man what am I resisting right now like what's coming up that I'm feeling like this and then from that inner dialogue you're going to go oh I need to surrender the fear right now of worrying about x y and z or whatever so since we've having the conversations and you're more it's more present in your awareness you're going to start noticing now the life's gonna, your life's going to start challenging you and giving you opportunities to practice to choose it. surrender yeah. and then another thing i wanted to kind of just uh piggyback on is when you talk about like enabling people and learning how to let them figure out things for themselves you're helping them doesn't have to stop you can just change the form Right. And one of the ways you can change the form is, is instead of giving people answers, you can start learning how to ask open-ended questions to get them to come up with their own answer so it comes out of their mouth. And this is why. If you give them the answer, it's your opinion from their perspective. If you ask them open-ended questions and then they think about the answer and say it out loud, it becomes their own truth. So you want to start causing more people that come up with their own truth rather than you giving them your opinion, even though your opinion is right on the money and it's the right of answer. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but that's how we, that's how yeah. we empower people Help to think for to themselves. Think. Yes. Teach them how to think for themselves rather than being the person that's thinking for them. Because then you're going to have you know, 200 followers every day around you just tugging on you because – they don't know that they have their own answers within them. So they're always going to be turning to you every yeah. moment of the day, and then you can't live your life. God forbid you want to go on vacation and hang out, and your phone's blowing up because they're always coming to you going, hey, what do I do? I, I need to make some eggs this morning. How do? I, where's the, you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank God it's not that bad. <laughs> Or you could be in our house where Carl and I will ask each other questions. He'll ask me, I'll ask him, and we go back and forth with just questions. That's, we have a question duo. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know how awesome it is. Well, it can it can be awesome because the question starts to have you start to look within there yourself. There aren't always answers. Sometimes there's not. You have yeah. to really think about it. Sometimes, you know, Rod will ask me a question, and I'm at a point now where I want to be able to say, I don't know. I, I don't know right now. What Do you? Why don't you? Uh, well, I'm starting to. Oh, okay, good. Where there was something in me that always had to at least uh, have, answer. have an answer, right, right wrong, or indifferent. Um, and now I want to be able to feel really comfortable saying, it's a great question. I have no idea. That's a starting point. This is why. Because if your ego is always having to come up with an answer, sometimes, sometimes it comes up with an answer that's not necessarily fit for that that solution. So sometimes the starting point is going, I don't really know. Let me think about that for a minute. Now that opens up a whole buffet of possibilities of coming up with multiple solutions that are yeah. just fit, the perfect fit for that. Yeah, scenario. and that always having to have an answer kind of coincides with that enabling and fixing. I mean, I'm starting to see a picture. <laughs> 
So what's your takeaway? I think perseverance. So, you know, I, I do that all day long, go from one thing to the next. Um, and what I am now realizing is that when I go home, I'm letting my guard down too quick. I'm not keeping up that, that, um, the armor on, and I need to continue that at home and not get tagged so quick. So you you got to remind you got to remind yourself that you are a leader everywhere you go, and even in, including your family. And so they're going to keep turning to you because they need you to help solve some of their relationship foes and their spats that they get into. And you're it's just like an entrepreneur. We're always working. You can't just turn it off. Even when we're on vacation. We're always trying to figure out, right? The mind's still spinning always. of figuring out how to be more effective. So even when you go home, you can't just turn off leadership because you're the leader in the family. And that's what I was doing. But what you can do, though, is ask for some time out, like you said. Ask for the time out. Or before you walk in, set yourself up with your little mini timeouts. you got to figure out how to reground yourself so you can transition from boss lady at work to mother and, and daughter, you know, leadership daughter because that's what you become sometimes when our parents get older we take on the reins Absolutely. of i'm the yeah. leader i'm the leader son uh i'm the mentor for you now because you're starting to not be as sharp as you used to be not that it's a bad thing it's just it's, par- it's part yeah it's, it's life. life it's part of getting older and so and i was taking a ticket just to be done when i got home and i can't no you can't yeah. because that's wow. how wow. that's your role and, and it's your gift back to your dad right and it's your gift to your son and it's the gift to your family you are that gift Sometimes we forget that, and sometimes we need to be reminded that this is the badge of honor that I get to wear and what an honor it is so that when those people have passed, we can look back and go, man, I got the honor to be able to be there for my father and help guide him and help calm him down when he's all riled up. And you got to try to figure out how to be the counterbalance of whatever it is. Right. So when, when they're coming at you with all this confusion, you got to learn how to bring the calm and, hey, Dad, it's okay. And Add, add what they what they need, what you see them needing, instead of being upset at them, they don't have it, be it for them in front of them so that they can dial and it mirror down. It, yeah. yeah. Thank you, ladies, for Thank being you. here. I appreciate Thank you. you. It's Thank always you guys. A, It's always an honor. Uh, that's all the time we have, but the good news is we're live here every Friday at noon. Follow me on Facebook at Coach Alex Rabina. I'm also on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks for joining us on the Alex Rabina Radio Show right here in your hometown station, KHTS.